Right, Alf, do you, do you want to go through the uh, national response? Yeah, sure, just quickly. Ooh. So, uh, national, the, the phrase that summed it up for her with national's policy is the attraction of science and technology for young people is directly linked to how it fits in with how they see their futures. She says, no. She says that that's not quite true <laughs> and that Paul Callahan has been pointing out this um, for some time, that there is some correlation, but uh, an industry being important to the economy is not primarily what drags people along to it. So she cites an uh, Australian study um, citing that they struggle for geoscience graduates, mm. even though the geosciences over in Australia are absolutely fundamental to their economy. Huge. Um, and... And in fact, uh, the, the number of students taking relevant subjects was in decline. Geology students around the country were closing. So, mm, yeah, economic significance may not be the primary driver for young people heading into the sciences. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I mean, money, jobs and funding do, definitely has some impact, but not as much as uh, you would otherwise think. Absolutely. I mean, a, a, an amusing anecdote just from back home is the number of people who went off and studied film and media, there was never going to be any way <laughs> that they were going to get employed. And film and media certainly wasn't how South Africa was making its money. But So there's something about hearts and minds, I think, is the point we're making there. Yeah, so go Big Bang Theory. You're doing yeah. a great job. You're doing far better work than most of the... Uh, than most, most governments. <laughs> Big fan of that show. And sorry, then you're getting distracted there. there um, then she finishes off by saying that National makes two really good points. Uh, the developing vocational pathways for clearer mm. pathways, that's a good one that she really, really likes. And a um, really pushing the manufacturing and technology pathways is another great option that she sees yeah, uh, I, from National. I can see that. I mean, less kids asking, why on earth am I learning maths? What possible use is this to me? And then realizing in their mid 20s that. It might have been useful, mm -hmm. <laughs> or not. Depends what you study, but it certainly would be good for kids potentially to know. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, so that's that. Uh, one, one thing. So, those are the blog posts, and and again, there will be more of the next couple of weeks on Cyblogs about the election. So, please do keep uh, keep a watch on it. It's Cyblogs S C I B L O G S dot co dot N Z. Um, but one thing that we did promise we would talk about very very quickly was the um, advanced technology. Institute, Advanced Technology in New Zealand. It's the high tech, uh, high value, um, high value manufacturing technology report that the government released and has decided to act upon. Yeah. Um, it was released while I was away, I believe. Yes, it's called the Powering Innovation Report. It was an independent report into high value manufacturing in New Zealand. And it actually, well, one of the major points that came out of it was a major change for uh, the CRI Industrial Research and Limited. You may have heard about uh, IRL in a number of matters. I I keep thinking of them in terms of high temperature superconductors, but ELF, uh, they work in all sorts of other things. Give us some examples. So uh, I'm, okay, I have to say right now, I am <laughs> employed by IRL, so, um, well, I, I live there, I'm not technically employed by them, so I do have a clear conflict of interest, but I think IRL is great. They do all sorts of things, so they do research on on things like novel green uh, paints, they do research into nanofluidics, yay that's my group, um, <laughs> they do research into energy efficiency, they do um, have glycosin as part of their, they, they essentially do a really good job at a little bit of everything with a few really specialised areas like yeah, high temperature superconductivity. They're really high tech. And it would have been a huge shame if they were to be lost, I'm sure yeah. everyone in New Zealand could say that. So it's lovely to see this. Um, high value manufacturing review saying okay let's not scrap IRL let's actually give them a whole bunch more money to give them the ability to expand to and really to really well. push that's that's what's so interesting the report is so many of these reports sort of outline major changes cost, cost cutting exercises this one says that look IRL needs to change um, enormously and it's based on models overseas from countries like uh, Singapore and some of the Scandinavian countries um, but saying right we are going to double their size they will now have outposts not only in Lower Hutt but in Auckland and Christchurch. Um, and the focus will now be very much on sort of expanding industrial development, um, uh, linking all universities and CRI. Oh, sorry, that's actually just part of the report. But the report talks about linking all universities and CRIs, increasing the number of international R&D research collaborations. Um, and, and the Advanced Technology New Zealand Institute thing, which IRL will become, will be focused specifically on engineering and applied science. Um, so it'll downsize basic research projects, which they envisage would be transferred to universities or other CRIs, and up 
uh, it's basically all about sort of commercialization, really clever commercialization of high tech, which is what people like Paul Callahan have been shouting loudly about for years, saying yes. you need to do. Um, I should just say, personal take, it's always, always a risky strategy to reduce investment in basic science. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's really easy to see why, again and again and again, because there is little causal link between the two. There's no logical group of statistics that you can argue through that says, okay, you invest in fundamental science and you're going to get, um, that will immediately transfer to X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. It's the blue sky projects, and this is true the world over, you can ask scientists through any country in the world, it's the blue sky projects that open up whole new technologies mm -hmm. that, because you have no idea when they're going to go. So Absolutely, it's but sad to see that focus, though I completely understand why that is necessary, particularly for New Zealand's economy I, I as do it sits as, at the moment. I, I do as well. It's, um, Yeah, and, I mean, so many of our technologies have come out of Blue Sky's research. Think, for example, of Wi-Fi, and they've sat in a cupboard drawer for 20 years before someone read an old paper and suddenly thought, wow, you know, I can, ooh, I can do this with, with this old thing. Yeah. So points well made but having said that having having an institute or, or having a, a group like this that are specifically focused with some 700 scientists are specifically focused on like doing amazing stuff with with high-tech manufacturing may not be the worst possible thing that we could do with that with no. a bucket of money um, and and to back us up on that and in fact we're taking our lead from what these awesome people have said uh, The Science Media Center has rounded up some comment from mm -hmm. people. Uh, Professor Sir Paul, Hall uh, Sir Paul Callahan, who is founder of the McDiamond Institute for Advanced Materials and Nanotech. Uh, he also did he start Magratech? Uh, yes, he was part of the he's part of he's, the original startup group. He's one of our top 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 scientists and and New Zealander of the year last year. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, and he's he's generally in favour of the report. And of course, the report doesn't talk only about restructuring RL. It does talk about a number of other things as well. So again very very well worth reading we will link to it the important point that he does pull out there is that the report recommends a national strategy for focusing on, on, on innovation and this is something lovely that we mm. really sorely need and him and a number of other uh, scientists have pointed that part of the report out as saying that that's going to be really good for the future so it's lovely to see agreed uh, saying we need to be innovative is and we're focusing on innovation is not a strategy it's not enough we need to figure out how yep. um, then there's Neville Jordan who's the immediate past president of the Royal Society and he's now chairman of Endeavour Capital uh, he's also of the opinion that the report is, is a great step forward to quote him um, he believes it's going to be welcomed by all and sundry in the science and tech centre and he's very much in favour of the recommendation around um, changing IRL. He also pulls out uh, that the uh, it recommends some changes in the IP system around mm. innovation in New Zealand, which again, as I mentioned before with the MIT example, I, I think is a great idea, and a number of other scientists feel the, the same way. And uh, with yeah. investment in IRL and the changes therein, that will probably become more apparent as well. So there, there is some concern among some people around the sort of increasing propensity in, in New Zealand for publicly funded science to become private mm. data. Um, and we'll, we'll see that being battled out, no doubt, over the next few years uh, and the outcome there. And then, Alf, do you want to take us through what uh, Prof. Sean Hendy, what his opinion was? Yeah, I shall indeed. Uh, Sean is generally in favour of the whole report, as usual. Um, Well, somewhat understandably, not as usual. <laughs> Specifically, he notes that um, this highly competitive manner, manner in which science has been funded in the past should have been actively discouraged a long time ago and that the report goes a long way to, uh, to, to saying that and getting it written down. It doesn't provide any hard and fast uh, solutions to that, but it notes that it's a problem that needs to be addressed and that uh, long term changes in the way science is funded is a really important thing to note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Sean, for those who are not aware, is also a Slyblogs blogger. He blogs at a measure of science and is particularly well known for modeling innovation networks in New Zealand. Uh, some very interesting stuff there to go and have a look at. There are pictures with maps and nudes and lines and great networks. Um, so that basically brings us to the end of this special edition. Uh, it's entirely possible next week we may touch a little bit more on some political slash science stuff if it comes up. Um, we will... We'll try uh, and keep you posted with where the most interesting and relevant information is as yeah, well. Yeah, um, pretty much. Over the period upcoming to the election, but... 
<laughs> next week we'll see how things we'll see how things are going um, yeah. do get in touch with us if you have any suggestions if there's things you'd like to hear more or less of if you never ever want to hear us talk about politics again just flick us an email and let us know it, yeah, we won't take offence it's much better for us uh, to not well it's easier for us to not have a crap podcast uh, if you tell us uh, so that would be good also don't forget to check out the events happening in this country if you go to the Cyblogs events calendar that's cyblogs.co.nz forward slash uh, I think it's category forward slash events, but if you go to the Cyblogs homepage, click on the events tab, and it's there. So do have a look at that. Um, thank you to Elf for co-podcasting. And coming back. And coming back. <laughs> We're very happy about that. Um, and also to Rian Sheehan for his wonderful music that we use for our intro and outro. And... I believe that's us. Again, please do go and check out the associated links for this podcast at uh, cyblogs.co.nz forward slash TOSP. That's it from us for another week. Catch you next time.